Welcome back. It's Tesla. It's electric. Boogie, woogie, woogie. Now, people are always saying that I'm biased, right? You're tuning in. People say it in the comment section. I see you haters. But okay, cool. Let the VP speak, okay? Tesla's VP spills the beans on Elon Musk and Tesla. Let's get active. I'm just as much of a fan as I, I became a fan. I didn't join Tesla as a fan. I didn't, uh, I didn't join Tesla as a as a direct sales and service uh, warrior. Um, didn't think I'd get into the Cybertruck as much as I have. Uh, yeah. Didn't think I'd you know care that much about autonomous vehicle policy. Now I came in as a climate nerd and a clean energy person and left as a, as a Tesla fan, so. Okay, so we got a clean energy and climate change nerd. See, I never came into the game like that. I'm gonna say, for, at least for myself, I came into the game just looking at the technology, the underlying fundamental technology, like, wow, these energy batteries are ridiculous. EVs, they're pretty nice, but it was just mostly energy, right? And it took a while for it to be built out. But net that at the end of the day, I think that's where I definitely hang my hat on. But also at the same time, I saw that EVs had their potential. They had their pros. They had some cons in comparison to the diesel or the combustible engine, I knew that things were going to change and shift like all technology has. You know, people who don't like EVs sound like people who didn't like cars. They didn't like engines prior to cars, the Model T, right? People who loved their horses, they were always joking because car enthusiasts, the ones who believed in the engine, the ICE, they laughed at him and said, hey, you have to walk to the general store to get gas. You're a clown. That's never going to be better than my horse. My horse is a part of the family. Eventually, the Model T got better and better and better, and horses got phased out. So same thing, but, you know, I don't care about what normies think. That's yeah. why. I love that. And then how, how long were you at Tesla for, for those that are not familiar? Uh Seven and a half years. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you joined in 2016-ish, uh, I guess, would have been the yeah. year? Yep. Yeah. End of 2016. So this was right at the beginning of the Model 3 ramp uh, when uh, everybody was uh, kind of doubting the company's ability to execute on such a grand vision, perhaps doubting their ambitions around building a gigafactory in Nevada. Talk, like, what, what was that like? You know, because I've... So there you go. People were doubting back before the actual ramp of the Model 3, right? and before the development of the factory in Nevada. And so that has been delivered, but many people still in my comment sections and in the media generally say that Elon cannot deliver. Guys, he's not delivering iPhone 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20, okay? It's not that easy. The things that we're doing are massively different, plus Apple doesn't even create its own phone. So no disrespect, but we create our own products and services. So thank you, but no thank you share stories from my end. I mean, we both, you know, we overlapped for four years, but we, we weren't on the same org. We were on sort of two different planets. Um, and what's funny is that I met you after I left Tesla, which is the most hilarious part. Like I'm meeting a lot of people after I leave Tesla because it's such a gigantic org. But what, what was that time like? Because man, like every time I, I talk to people that have been at the company, there, there's so many like insane stories of survival, like a, through a very brutal time of getting the company to scale. Walk me through yeah. what your experience was like. As Man, as you can. <laughs> we need a lot more than an hour and a half for that. You know, it's, it's, um, I think the people that came before me at Tesla and are still there or have, are, have, have been hired since are just remarkable, just absolutely remarkable. And a lot of times what, ha what ends up happening is people sort of, for, we, we tend to forget all of the blood, sweat and tears that goes into developing a startup, um, figuring things out in the beginning, um, you know, how to get the right signage. For a factory uh to you know which which partners to choose and which not to choose what chemicals to use battery size to use you know lots and lots of lots and lots and lots of different decisions um I, you know i'll just give you an anecdote from my fir very first day literally first day um i get on a conference call i was still i had taken the desk of a guy named mateo armio who's who's, who's uh since founded form energy which by the way you guys should do a whole podcast just about the tesla diaspora maybe you have unbelievable like it's crazy the number of founded companies from ex tesla people and and the success sure. they're having um so the tesla diaspora guys I, I never even talk about that but 
that's actually pretty legitimate. A lot of people that actually just leave Tesla, they go forth and create companies and create startups that do great for themselves. And so that's an amazing trend that you could find that the employees that work at Tesla after a decade or so that they go on and start opening up their own startups and businesses and companies and firms and different types of industries. But at the end of the day, the actual culture and the skill set that you actually acquire during your time at Tesla is something that you could utilize for your life. And I think this is a, a hidden gem for most people because most people work at a company and they're just pushing paper. They're like twisting doorknobs and they don't go on to find bigger and greater things or just as great things. And people at Tesla, ex-employees, that ex-Tesla diaspora has that effect on the Mac grow economy on the market as a whole. And that's something that we have to take into account. And again, this is why Tesla is built different. It's cut from a different cloth. It's cut from a different fabric. It's raised differently. Okay. It's rumbled in a jungle. Tesla knows all about obstacles to opportunities. But so I, I, I'm at his desk in DC. I jump on this phone call. Uh, didn't even have a computer um, at the time. I uh, didn't have my login information. And JB is speaking on the phone call about, um, I won't get into specifics of all the partnerships and everything, but basically that there was some chemical that uh, didn't have all the EPA testing and approval that had needed to get done. And, and he says on the call, I, I literally first day, Elon hired some effing somebody and I don't know what the hell he's doing. It doesn't seem like he's doing a damn thing. Uh, I, let me find it. Rohan, R Rohan. And so... <laughs> He didn't know that anyone was on a call. He didn't know there was a call. He thought it was just a meeting, but somebody had dialed into this thing. So I, I, I said, JB, hey, it's Rohan, uh, first day here. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, off to the races from there. But, you know, what, one of the things he said on that call, and it stuck with me um, throughout, and it's kind of a Tesla ethos, as far as I do know this now, and Hans, I think you guys understand this very well. Why, in the, I remember him saying this, like, like, like it was so here goes the Tesla Etho. This is why we're on the ground, listening to employees, getting information from their perspective and seeing what they've learned from the company and seeing if we can get some inside take on it. See, you guys are reading headlines. See, we're diving deep over here at Obstacles to Opportunity on Everyone Hates Tesla. We're actually listening to the employees that are currently there, ex-employees. We're actually digging behind actual services and products that Tesla offers and sees what it's doing in the real world. We, you guys are just following tweets, I guess. Hmm. Yeah, that's how you invest. So let's follow tweets. Yes, let's invest in the company. And how are we going to analyze the company? Well, I'm going to follow the tweets. Yesterday, who in the hell decided to partner with X company? We do important shit ourselves. Yeah. If it's important, we should be doing it. Why did you guys decide to do this testing regime with some godforsaken partner? And a, a lot of that was born out of a fear that people were coming after Tesla or that incumbents in the industry, various industries, um, were not on the up and up, uh, potentially trying to undermine Tesla, might look to infiltrate the supply chain in some form. Uh, that, you know, it, a derogatory term, but I think it's actually a, a compliment that paranoia really served Tesla very, very, very well and uh, helped develop that ethos of we're going to do this shit ourselves. We're going to figure this stuff out. So that was my first, very first day. And, you know, JB, I, since then, I, what a, what a gentleman, what a, what a really wonderful guy. And, but, um, just goes to show you how hardcore, uh, every little thing was, um, and how, um, unbelievably focused the team was in, in getting things right. Um, and at the time they were not so right. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, and most people don't think about that. There's massive amounts of hills that you have to climb, especially if you're breaking into an industry and you're revolutionizing a lot of things about the industry. Revolution. Let's talk about the engine, right? We're moving from ice to battery. Electric. That's one. So imagine how many indirect suppliers and vendors are connected to the old outdated engine. Shout out to the engine. It was important in history when it came into existence. Then revolutionizing dealership, oh, excuse me, hmm, dealership models, replacing those dealership models with the models that we utilize, right? Direct to customers, showrooms. You order online, it's the same price, right? There's no difference. There's no, let's haggle you down. 
it's marked up by five grand, 10 grand. It's none of that. Okay. So we got that. That's a revolutionary change in the way that actual the product is sold and another way on what the product is at its core. Just that alone causes a lot of people to take issue. Also, I'll give you another one. This is why possibly the media hates them so much. So they have so much negative propaganda. And at the end of the day, it's so negative that people click on it. And that's how it generates money. But it won't be getting any money from advertisement dollars because Tesla doesn't pay for advertisement, at least traditionally. So all the media companies, you know, news agencies, you know, your local media, et cetera, et cetera, New York Times, you know, CNN and et cetera, they don't get paid because Tesla doesn't run ads. Now, we have ran a little bit of ads because people always hounded Elon to do that. And I'm like, you, you don't run a business, so just be quiet, but okay. And especially even if you do, you don't run this business. But at the end of the day, word of mouth, right? All off the strength of the product and service. So much appreciation goes to the VP for sharing that bit of information. And I'll continue with the video a little bit later on the next video where he shares about the intense culture at Tesla. It's super hard, right? And the secret sauce to Tesla success. Hopefully you guys can listen and actually learn about it. And maybe you could apply some of that secret sauce to get yourself out of God dang much dick and twisting doorknobs and get yourself invested in the market. Overall, you don't have to invest in Tesla. You know, this is not financial advice. I'm just going to say that for the normies. Shout out to everybody. Like, share, subscribe. Hit the support channel. That made no sense, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Hit the notification bell so you guys can get the video of this great information coming from Obstacles to Opportunity. I'll see you guys on the next episode. Peace out. It's electric. Woogie, woogie, woogie. You can conceive it. It's electric. Woogie, woogie, woogie. And I know 